So confession time. Before making my documentary on the return of Killer Instinct in 2013, I barely knew anything about the actual mechanics of the game. I know I'm awful and a scrubman. Sure, I knew some of the development story and how the game had a massive fan base, but as for anything directly related to playing the game, I was pretty clueless. Luckily for me, the complete Killer Instinct guide by Infill existed. Considered by many to be one of the best fighting game guides ever created, the guide contains a treasure trove of knowledge and breakdowns on characters and game mechanics, as well as other amazing resources such as community history and patch note archives that I used to get up to speed quickly. During his interview for Fight On, Infill and I talked about the story behind making the guide and the challenges and rewards in teaching others how to play Killer Instinct. I'd always been interested in making fighting game content. Well, I'm a programmer by trade, but I also do a lot of teaching. So I did tutoring uh, for years. I was, you know, high school, university tutor, and I also did TAing work in my master's. So I always had this sort of notion about how to approach teaching something to somebody. I could, you know, see their roadblocks and like, you know, if this person can't understand a concept because they're coming from this angle, well, okay, let's come from the other side of this angle. And I sort of learned this approach. I always wanted to try that in sort of a fighting game approach. When KI came out, I had obviously had no idea I was going to do any guide for it. I just thought it was another fighting game I would play with my friends. Maybe I would play it for a couple months, maybe not, like who knows, right? Uh, I was interested in exploring it. And then season two was, uh, like you say, Iron Galaxy came on to do season two. That sort of re-sparked a lot of conversation about KI in the scene. It had its day at EVO and, you know, a lot of pro players, Justin, PR Balrog, these sort of, these sort of players who are known for other games, gave KI a shot. Uh, Justin made top eight at EVO that year, so he was sort of there giving, you know, lending his name as, you know, this is a game I'm interested in playing. Um, and then season two comes around and it's like, oh, new game, new developer, eight, nine more characters. We're going to do this once a month over the, this next year. And, you know, a lot of people were interested in the game. So, like, you would go to watch streams, streams I had been watching to sort of study the game on my own interests. And people would come in and say, oh, how does this work? What is this character doing? Like, what is this, what does that flashing meter mean? When this character throws fireballs, why is, why is this happening? And I was in chat sometimes, sometimes typing answers, sometimes... The interest from new players was so uh, intense that it was like seven or eight questions in a row and all of them required pretty in-depth answers and you know the chat just scrolls and you can't like help all these people and I thought to myself wouldn't it be cool if there was a resource that could just you could just like point to a link and say like all these things you're seeing on the screen this meter does that this meter does that this character does this this is this good move you're seeing this is why it's good and I thought that would be cool if someone did that and I thought to myself well I had always wanted to do some fighting game content Maybe now is a chance for me to try this out and see how it goes. And I thought, well, okay, this is a small enough project. I sort of scoped it out. I looked at what it would take to get a website up. I could have built the website, but I wanted one that was both mobile friendly and desktop friendly. And to do that, coding is like, you know, a bit more intense and design works. So I, I, I found a nice template I liked that was very mobile friendly and good. Um, and that sort of lowered the burden of getting content up. This is one of the main things I struggled with at first. When I decided I wanted to do this guide, uh, you had people like Maximilian who were doing great YouTube content. So he had like a KI season one tutorial. I believe it was two videos, each about 20 minutes. And it was like, this is how combo breakers work. This is how this works. And this is how instinct works. And this is how, you know, all these things work. And he did it in his traditional assist me style where it was like, you know, very entertaining, engaging for the audience, even if you weren't necessarily interested in the game. He had this sort of, Max has this sort of energy about him that's very attractive to a lot of you know, people watching his videos. And I thought, well, okay, if I did a YouTube video, A, I would have to compete with people who are professional videographers, basically, professional in that sense. And I thought to myself, what, like, are there any drawbacks to doing YouTube's content? So for one thing, I think YouTube is not very uh, scannable. If you're presented with a 20 minute tutorial video, a lot of people will just be like, I'm out. Like, this is too much. I'm not going to watch 20 minutes. I just want to, like, get, get the gist. Like, give me, like, a one-minute summary. Like, give me this or that, right? You, you know, you can, like, click around and you just see, like, thumbnails of the video when you're scanning through YouTube, right? But you have no idea what's being talked about there. The other main drawback of YouTube, and I think this was one, the one that actually turned me away from doing it, was that it was permanent. You could make no changes to the YouTube video when it's posted, right? You have to either make a new YouTube video and, you know, delete the old one or not. I don't know, like, leave your old one up and it has wrong information in it, right, as the game gets patched, for example. And I thought to myself, that's a, that's a pretty big drawback. If I wanted to change a sentence, if I was unhappy with the wording of a sentence, or like, the game got patched, so this move is now punishable instead of safe, and everything I talked about on this page is now not really that useful. With a YouTube video, like, you're stuck. People like search Killer Instinct tutorial in YouTube and you get this old content that means nothing. And as good as that Max video was, 
and how, as cool as it was for getting me involved and like learning initially and all the people who love that content, like if you go back and watch it now, it's not going to help you play the current game that much, right? Like this, a lot of the rules have changed. Some of it's still applicable, but as a beginner, you don't know which parts are applicable and which aren't. You have to like ask someone else, like, is this still how it works? Like, I don't know, right? And in the end, I actually decided on a bit of a hybrid approach. I decided on text in my guide with bolded points. So some sentences are bolded, some important phrases to talk about. Like if you're just skimming the page and you don't want to read this giant, these giant paragraphs, you could like pick out this character is high mobility or something and be like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I should read the surrounding text and like see why. Oh, that's interesting to me as a player who likes high mobility or like, oh, this character is blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, oh, that doesn't interest me at all. You just keep skimming, right? So the bolded text makes it cannibal and the GIFs, which are all throughout my pages, allow me to do YouTube-ish style footage, right? Because in fighting games, you need to see the game in motion. And I think particularly in KI, you need to see the game in motion. There's a lot of things like that have visual tells, like for example, how do you combo break? Well, combo breaking is it's not something that can be easily shown in still footage or pictures. It has to be like, okay, here's the flow of a combo from start to finish. It's a 10 second clip, doesn't have to be that long, it just sticks right in the website there. And it's another thing that catches people's eyes as they scan the page. And you know, this hybrid approach ended up working really well for me. And I was able to write, because of my history and sort of academia and the sort of tutoring thing, I basically wrote out lesson plans when I first started the guide. My initial approach for the guide was actually KI for Street Fighter 4 players. <laughs> I think it was called a Killer Instinct Guide for Street Fighter 4 players. That was the name of my guide. And because Street Fighter 4 was the most popular Street Fighter game at the time, basically if you played Street Fighter, you were a Street Fighter 4 player, full stop. And if you were talking to a Street Fighter 4 player who was interested in KI, they would want to know, okay, what's the, what's the parallel between what I'm seeing here and KI? So for example, like instinct mode, what does that do? Or like, so I wrote the, my guide and looking back at it now, I think it was actually kind of a bad approach, which is why my guide no longer does that. Blah, 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 this move is seven frames. And like, you know, you, you haven't explained a frame to anybody. And if, if you're a new player coming to this guide, it's just like the worst. <laughs> like, you, know, you read this and you're like, this isn't for me. Like, I don't know what all this stuff means. When Street Fighter V came out and most players moved over to that game and being a Street Fighter IV player in 2017 wasn't really a thing, right? So like, why am I still, why is my guide still being so like narrow-minded and focused on like only Street Fighter IV? If you come to the guide and it says four Street Fighter IV players, and you're like, well, I don't play Street Fighter IV. I guess there's nothing here for me. So I rewrote a lot of my guide. I changed the title to the Complete Killer Instinct Guide. I refocused any page where I talked about Street Fighter IV specific mechanics. So I tried to patch in, basically. I did a patch for my guide. Again, only possible because it's a text guide, not a YouTube guide. Um, and I sort of patched a new approach in. And I sort of fundamentally changed how pages were structured and ordered. And I, so it was sort of a pretty wholesale change. And if you didn't notice, if you, were, if you read my guide before and read my guide now and you think it's about the same, that means I did a good job, I guess, because I was trying to make it not apparent that I made this change. I finished in about six weeks. So I, I started writing in October of 2014. So that was the start of season two, right around, I, I believe I started working on it right before season two launched, which was a mid October of that year. And uh, I uh, published it, my first version, I wrote pages for like how the normals worked, how the special moves worked, the defensive mechanics, so like shadow counter, uh, instinct, these sorts of things. And I wrote, uh, a small guide page for each character. And actually the character guide pages were the last thing I wrote at first. They were kind of, I don't want to call them afterthoughts, but they were kind of like, a lot of the questions around KI at the time were focused on, because the game only had a couple characters, right? It had it had the eight from season one, and I forget if I had written TJ and Maya, who were like the first two season two characters, but it had no more than 10 characters. And you know, a lot of those characters, you didn't have the Agonos with the walls and you didn't have the, you know, the Arya with the three bodies. You had characters that pressed ground normals and jumped and had kind of similar special moves and command grabs. So most of the questions around KI at the time were like, how did the combo breaker system work? This is a system-wide mechanic that's kind of confusing and not necessarily clear to a beginner. You know, this character's looping moves that look really identical to each other, but some of them are special moves and some of them aren't. And like, which one, like, how do I, miss? I don't know what's going on. And so like, that was my core focus. Here's how you play the game system, system wise. You've got these universal mechanics and shadow counters, instinct, combo breaking and counter breaking and these sorts of things. And then in the end, I'm like, oh, and by the way, you can use these characters and here's some things about them, I guess. So my initial character pages were not that involved. And they also had no video, importantly. I was like, okay, this is good enough. I just get this out. <laughs> it was Christmas. I wanted to go sell, you know, enjoy my break. And uh, I didn't want to like 
be thinking about this over Christmas, and I was actually, it's been so long now that I can't remember how long I wanted to update this guide. I didn't know if I was going to be doing it like, well, certainly I didn't expect to do it for many years like I did. But I was like, oh, I, maybe I'll update the rest of the season two characters, because there was like one a month for like the next four or five months, right? So I was like, okay, maybe I'll work on it once a month from now until June, and then maybe that's fine. Yeah, I can leave it at that, or you know, maybe it wasn't even any good. I don't know. Maybe people would read it and be like, "This is not that great." So then I could just leave it, you know. So I, I had no intention of like working on it as long as I did. So when all these characters came out, and I'm like, "You know, the reception seems pretty good. People seem to like this. Maybe I should like put a little bit more effort into these pages, like uh, the characters that didn't have video. Maybe I should stick some video in there. It's, it'd be really useful to see a video of this move that I talk about in text, but could use a picture, right, or a video." And then Iron Galaxy released more complicated characters. Each new character they released, I thought they were all cool and really they added a lot to the game as far as I'm concerned, but they were more difficult to explain than the beginner characters. So they needed more video. They needed more in-depth thought process from like the start to finish. Like how am I going to explain this character to someone who's never played the game? This character does this, but it doesn't really always work like that. Like <laughs> she's breaking a rule that every other character has to follow, and then this character breaks a different rule that this character fo follows half the time when she's an instinct and not the other time. And you know, it's like, it became this sort of juggling thing. So I put more effort into the pages, and that's when the, the workload started to really balloon. There were other things where, uh, so as a programmer, I, I was, I'm always interested in learning new things to, to work on. So like new, I have those fun little side projects. My KI guide is in a lot of ways a programming side project. And uh, so for example, I did, uh, I revamped my character page, uh, the, uh, the place where you select like which character you want to learn about. I revamped that to have some visualizations on it. So they're, you know, they're nothing too fancy, they're just like, it was just me exploring ways to, you know, here's a cool thing I can do in programming, is there a way I can incorporate it into my KI guide and make it better? Then I did the uh, Shadow Breaker Trainer, which is a much more involved project, it involves sort of really fast real-time JavaScript that I had to, I actually even got a little bit of help from some people who were more JavaScript senior than me to like tell me what, where and what I couldn't do to make this real time uh, really fast and work in a bunch of different browsers. I think that actually ended up being one of the <laughs> cooler parts of my guide yeah, in the end. Is. Like you can almost play, the, you can't really play the game in your browser, but you can kind of play the game in your browser a little bit. And you know, you can just be at work and just be like tapping the break key and it's like, oh, that was a bit early or that was a bit late. There's a visualization at the bottom. So you can tell, oh, I was slightly late there. I, I'm always late on this when I play online. Like, Oh, maybe I should just be a little earlier, right? You can actually see instead of just being like yes or no to the break attempt. So these sort of projects, it started with about six weeks. I wasn't sure if I was going to continue past maybe just a couple extra hours here and there. And in the end, I've, I've put at least 1,500 hours into it. I mean, that's a lowball estimate um, over the last, since 2014 until this year, so five years. It's scary because especially when my guide is, uh, for better or worse, it's sort of treated as this like, some people call it like the, the Bible or KI or whatever. People will go to the site and they'll treat a lot of what I say as like correct, which I hope, you know, I hope I'm correct most of the time. Um, I try to be as objective as possible, not that my personal biases is which characters I like or dislike or whatever come through, I hope. So, you know, if I make a change because I want this section to be more accessible to a different audience and I say something wrong or it like doesn't match up with something way over here on another part of the guide, then that, that stuff can get away from me very quickly. Especially since my guide has something like, I don't know, close to 100 pages now, maybe not that many, but 70, 80 pages, and they're all pretty dense, full of text, and I can't keep track of what I've written three years ago, right? People will come up to me all the time and say like, oh, you, you, did, you forgot to change this. You changed that over there, but not here. And I'm like, oh yeah. So I, I quickly make the change, but like how many of those other instances are out, they're out there, right? It's really hard to keep track of all that stuff. When your guide sort of matters in that sense, where like people will read it and get an impression of what's correct and what's not correct about the game, making those changes initially were, were really uh, stressful for me. I didn't want to like make it make say something incorrect that I then contradict myself over here because I forgot to change this paragraph, which then contradicts this, and it was tough. As a person, I'm a pretty low-key, sort of introverted person. I don't necessarily go out and seek the spotlight. And I'm, I'm always interested in helping other people ahead of myself. Like I would much rather put work in and like I did this guide for free, which I think is, you look back on it now, maybe not <laughs> the greatest uh, idea. But um, certainly if I were to do more work in this sort of space, it would have to be, 
it was just too much to do for free again. But at the time, I was thinking to myself, well, I should just be, I'm, helping other people is great. I would much rather just put, put some work in. I, I get something out of it for myself because I learn things for programming and learn things about how to teach, and I, you know, I learn myself. But the ultimate goal is to help other people. And for me, I never really thought of, it sort of kind of crept up on me that people were putting my guide in this sort of light. Is like people, I would never say this about my own work, but people have said like, I've heard people tell me that they think it's the best fighting game guide created. And I think that's, I, I take that very humbly. Like it's really, I, I really love hearing that. It's really interesting to me, but you know, I can't ever <laughs> say that about my own work. That's just sort of not the person I am, I suppose. As a result of my work in my guide, and I've also sort of been in and around KI and a lot of other facets. So I worked with all sorts of different content creators. Like I did, uh, I worked with Sagem on these Killer Instinct mini videos, I believe we called them, for uh, KI World Cup one year. We did 30 second or a minute long clips of each character and what they could do. So if you were watching this World Cup for the first time, I had no idea about the game, we would be interspersing these videos throughout the broadcast. And I sort of like became the sort of person who you could ask about KI. I would, I would be there and be like, oh, so this is how it works. You, you can go to my guide page for more. You could ask here. There would be controversies about the game, like is this character too good or not good? And I would sort of give my opinion there. And like people would often say incorrect stuff about the game that I would try and correct. And I would go into training mode and break down how this worked and try to show evidence of my stuff and some of the uh, bugs that were in the game as a result of my you know, training mode experimentation got fixed, which I think is sort of a nice little side bonus that maybe if I hadn't done this, maybe the bug would still be there or there would be, you know, the game hopefully improved a little bit because of some of this. So I've kind of forgotten your initial question, but in terms of uh, how does it feel to, to be like the person who's responsible for the guide, I guess my best answer is I'm, I'm just happy that people like it and I'm really happy that people found it useful. And for me, I got a lot out of it being a community member and being a person that people could talk to about the hobby. People would come up to me afterwards and say things like, you know, I read your guide when I was at a hard time in my life. Like I was going through surgery and I read your guide in the hospital bed. And like, to, like that's just, when I wrote the guide, I was trying to help people learn the video game. I wasn't trying to help them through like a tough time in their life. And so when that sort of thing comes up and I was like, oh man, that's, that's really cool. You know, like that's really hard to grapple with as a person who's just trying to help others. And you help them in ways that isn't just necessarily the game too. So in the end, my reward comes from helping other people and you know, the, you know, any of the other accolades or whatever people might give to the guide are sort of just cherry on the top. Thanks for watching our chat with Infill. We've got more Killer Instinct content coming to the channel soon, as our next video is taking a behind the scenes look at the music and sounds of Killer Instinct 2013, with folks like Casey and Allie Edwards, Little V, Mick Gordon, and more. Subscribe to the channel to know when that goes live, and if you want early sneak peeks of that video and more, consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash holdbacktoblock. Until next time.